Hi everyone, so in this tutorial I'm going to be showing you how to draw black longer overlapping fur and this is going to be more of a step by step tutorial showing you the specific layers and the layering process for this type of fur texture. So this was a portrait that I've been asked to complete last month and it's of Paddington the Golden Doodle. So these breeds, very similar to cockapoos and labradoodles, are very popular and I'm sure as pet portrait artists we're going to be asked to draw them fairly frequently. So it's really nice to have a good understanding of how to tackle this type of complex fur texture. Because of how the fur overlaps in many different ways, this is definitely one of the fur textures that makes us think, where do I start? Do I start with the fur that overlaps or do I start with what is underneath it? And because there is a lot of things going on in one small area, it can become a bit overwhelming. But with the layering process that I'm going to show here in this tutorial, it doesn't have to be. And you can actually enjoy this process. This is one of my favourite fur textures to draw in pastels. Now if you've seen many of my other videos here on YouTube, you'll know that I put a lot of focus on my base layer stage. I'm not focusing on the exact colour, but I am mapping in where my main lights and darks are, and I am hinting at that fur direction. So you can see here that I am moving my applicator in the direction that the fur is going to travel in when I come to put my details on top. It looks like it's curving away from the nose and over to the side of his face. This is important, it just helps me personally to make sure that I'm always following that reference photo as accurately as I can. Now I have never been someone who likes to work with one solid colour for the base layer. And the reason being is I feel that we have a tendency to rush the future layers if we do that. Also, as I've said, I don't think that we follow the reference photo as closely, which actually means that we spend more time trying to fix areas that we've gone a little bit wrong, whether or not it's that we've placed some of the fur direction in the wrong way, or maybe some of the main important clumps of fur are in the wrong place. I do find that those mistakes happen far easier if we're putting one solid colour down for the base layer. Whereas here, now I've sped this up slightly, you can see I'm adding where my main darks are and then when some of the highlights are. For my mid transitions, I'm just blocking in with more of a mid-tone grey, but it's still reinforcing my contrast. This is my main aim at this base layer stage. So onto the second layer, and I'm now using my pastel pencils. Now I like to mix between four different brands, so I use the Carbofello, the Pitts, the Derwent and the Caran d'Ache. Now there are many reasons why sometimes I might need a softer lead, other times I'll need a harder lead to get some finer details, and it just might be that some of the sets that I've got don't have the colours that I need. I only use the light fast colours, so it does limit the pencils that I have in front of me, but that's not necessarily a bad thing because it encourages us to mix different pencils to create specific colours that we can see in our reference photo and that makes us more confident in terms of colour mixing and colour selection. But I'll cover that later on in this tutorial because I do know colour is one of those things that can cause quite a lot of anxiety. How do we know which colour to select and how do we know which order to layer that colour? But for this time here with this layer, I'm just tidying up my lights and darks and I'm reinforcing my contrast. I want to make sure that I'm working from dark to light. So with a black dog like this, I'm being very bold and brave with making sure that my shadows are as dark as I can possibly get them. One of the common problems that happens is when drawing black fur, we're too scared to go too dark in case we can't lighten it back up. But what happens then is we end up with a dog that looks more grey rather than black. So that pet portrait won't resemble as much like that animal as it should. Now what I'm also doing at this stage when drawing longer fur is I'm softening all of my edges. I don't want from one colour or one value to the next to be really harsh. Now what I mean by that is I don't want to end up with a base foundation that looks like painting by numbers. Now I used to love painting by numbers, it's actually one of the things that got me into painting as a child and you can create some beautiful art with that but what I don't want here is some of those harsher edges, those blocks of colours that that can often create. So what I'm working on here is softening out those edges so that from one colour to the next is a nice gradual transition. 
When you work with pan pastels, because they blend so beautifully, look at the base layer that I've added in here. Again, there's no harshness. I want to be reinforcing that softness with my pastel pencils right up until I build up my detailed layers. And the one thing that I've learned through the drawing process is take your time with these layers. Don't try to rush them to, in order to get to your detailed layers quicker. Because what happens is, these layers, if they're missed, your fur will end up with a far flatter and more two-dimensional feel. One of the more common questions that I'm asked is, why is it that my details look grainy and they have a bit of that grittier appearance? Now, for me personally, I don't like that look in my details. I think it's because before I went in with using pastels, I was a colour pencil artist. And where we work on smoother paper, typically, when using colour pencils, I always found that my details were beautiful and smooth. And I thought to myself, there must be a way that I can capture that softness and smoothness in my details when working with pastels. And through trial and error, I've learned that it is all in the number of layers that we apply. If I do a pan pastel or a soft pastel stick layer and I jump straight in with my pastel pencils and I start drawing in my details, which is the current layer that I'm working on now, those details will look grainy because I don't have enough layers underneath where I've gradually been building up the pastel in specific layers. The pan pastel base layer is serving a really important purpose for mapping in our main lights and darks, but we shouldn't be relying on that layer for removing all of the two or three layers of pencils that we need to be applying before we add our details. It's one of the common things that I have seen or alternatively what happens is um, we try and add two or three extra layers of the pan pastel in order to get the colour or the, the contrast right and then we'll find that the pencils are just gliding over the top and the pigment isn't able to come out. Now what happens then is, is you fill the tooth of the paper. When you fill the tooth of the paper by applying too much pan pastel pigment, your pencils don't have any of that slightly textured surface to grip to. So it just doesn't, the, the pigment of the pastel does not come off of that lead. Now that means then that unfortunately we're not going to be able to add many details on top. There are a couple of things you can try. You can apply a workable fixative over the top to try and um, resolve that issue. But again, you, fixatives, they're not my preference. They can change the colour of your artwork. So for me personally, I like to make sure that I'm always being aware with how much pastel I'm applying at my base layer stage and then I'm using the layering process that I'm showing here. I find that this is the, the best way of avoiding filling the tooth of the paper whilst building up lots of depth and a lot more realism. So before I move on to the other side of the bridge of the nose, if the tips and techniques that I've shared so far in this video have been useful, I would really appreciate it if you could give it a like and a thumbs up because it makes a huge difference. And if you would like to get notified of all of the content that I upload to YouTube, then hit that subscribe and the bell button. If you've got any art related questions as well, feel free to pop them in the comments below because I'm more than happy to help if I can. So there I was just adding more of my highlighted details, but you can see here how important it's been that I work from dark to light. Those lighter details that we would be able to touch first if we were to stroke this dog have to be left until the last layer. If we add them in too soon, we're going to have to draw around them because they need to be left until that last layer. It's just like when drawing the whiskers. If we draw whiskers in too early on, because they are the one element that overlaps everything else, we then will have to draw around them, which takes so much longer. So any details where you can see that they're overlapping, do make sure to leave those until that last layer. So the area of fur between the eyes, this here is really important because it changes direction in a couple of different ways. If I don't get the fur direction and how it curves accurate here, it's going to actually change the shape of the face completely. So the area between the eyes is where the skull starts to slope up and over to the top of the head. If I don't get the curve and direction of my pencil strokes accurate, I'm going to potentially make the forehead look really tall or too wide. So here I want to make sure that I'm really studying that photograph. 
and I have a video here on YouTube. It's my top tips for drawing realistic fur in pastels. I'll link that in the description below if that's of interest. And there I speak about a few different things, one of which is the fur length, fur direction and fur thickness. Now on my in-depth slower tutorials on Patreon, because they're often uploaded in real time, I'm able to explain how to hold the pencil, how to move the pencil, where to position your hand, and even down to things like how long the lead should be. Do we want to work with a sharper point or does it need to be rounded off and a little bit blunt? Because all of these things come into play when we're trying to decide what type of pencil stroke to create for the fur texture that we're trying to replicate. So if my in-depth tutorials on Patreon are of interest, I'll link that in the description below as well. Now I do have a Patreon library on my website and it lists all of the tutorials that are immediately available on each tier so you can get an idea of the content that's there before you sign up. Now the wonderful thing about Patreon is it is very flexible. You can stay for as long as you like or you can cancel at any time. So as I say, that is all linked in the um, description below. And if you do have any questions on that, then feel free to pop them in the comments. So the lower section of the face here on the right hand side is one of those situations where I'm being brave. I'm just going for it and I'm making the base layer really dark. This here has the um, light source is not able to get onto the right hand side of the face compared to the left. If you have a look at his two eyes, the reflections and everything is so much brighter on the left side of his face compared to the right. So I do have to make sure here that I'm judging my contrast, I'm getting my shadows dark and I'm showing where that light source is hitting the face. Now light source is something that I talk about in all tutorials because it is so important. Quite often the shadows and highlights, they're never random. They follow the underlying bone and muscular structure and they are therefore hinting and following that light source. So if you add a highlight in an area where there shouldn't be a highlight, you'll be, as I say, changing that light source, but you'll also potentially be making it look like the animal has a slight bump there. So therefore that part of the fur is higher up and catching more light. So adding too many highlights in areas where it should actually be darker can really affect the overall feel of the portrait. So on this side of the face, you're going to see that I'm going to be using a lot more blues than I did on the left hand side. The reason being this follows going back to the light source because this side of the face is in shadow. It's going to be picking up a lot more of those cooler colours. In some cases, black fur, because it is very reflective, it's going to pick up some purples, blues, and in some cases, even some warmer browns. It's going to depend on where the photograph was taken, the time of day, was it indoors, was it outside, was it cloudy, was it sunny? There are so many different things. But we do want to be making sure that if we notice any colour, that we drag that into the layers. Now on this side everything was a little bit more cooler so I am using more of my darker blues in order to make the black fur have more depth. Now I uploaded a video here to YouTube, I think that was last week and I've got the real time version on Patreon as well and it's me drawing a giraffe and I'm showing how exactly to select those colours with a very easy method. One of the questions that I'm asked fairly frequently is how do I know which colour to select based on the reference photo that I'm working from? Now I use a really, really simple technique. I don't overcomplicate it. It is as simple as whether or not it is a warm or a cool colour. But in order to show and explain that properly, I'm using a colour wheel on my Patreon tutorials. So when I'm selecting a specific colour that might be a little bit more um, specific, so whether or not I want something to contain a bit of a purple tint, but it doesn't need to be bright purple, I need to be working with a combination of pencils in order to replicate that colour. In order to know which pencil to select, it's so much easier to have that visual colour wheel in front of you. Now, as soon as someone mentions colour wheel, we start to think, oh, that must be really confusing and I'm going to get too overwhelmed. It's too complex. But I don't go into any of the, um, the rules of colour wheels, you know, colour theory or anything like that. It's so simple. It just purely is based on whether or not it is a warm or a cool colour. So if that would be of interest, that real-time tutorial is up on Patreon now and I do have a time-lapse version with voiceover here on YouTube too. So I will link that in the description as well if that's of interest. 
So because this side of the face was more in shadow, there wasn't a huge amount of clumps of fur that were catching more of the light. So this side of the face came together a little bit quicker than the other side. But that doesn't mean that I need to cut corners or rush this part of the face. I'm still making sure that any subtle detail that I can see, even if it's just the, the tiniest hint of a darker grey, I'm making sure to add that over the top of my dark base foundation. This brings me back to the importance of contrast. Now I focus on contrast so much more than the exact colour because if I didn't have my base layer really dark here and you've seen it's, it's as black as I can get it. If I didn't make this as dark as what I have done, these current grey pencils that I'm working with would not show up. So that's a very common um, thing to notice. If you feel confident with the pencil that you're using, but it's not bright enough, it's not showing up, but you think that it's the right pencil, quite often your base layer underneath isn't dark enough, so it's not allowing that lighter shade to be visible. If you make that base layer a little bit darker, these grey pencils that you want to be using will then show up. If you're drawing a dog of a similar fur texture and you get to this stage in your portrait and you feel that it's not got as much depth and it's looking a little bit flat, it will be one of two reasons. So it will be that your contrast isn't right, so whether or not your shadows aren't dark enough or your highlights aren't bright enough, or that you don't have enough layers built up. You can see here that because of the sections that I've shown in real time, I have done eight, nine layers, sometimes more. Here is an additional layer that's going on top using a lighter blue. All of these extra layers, even if it's only in one or two areas, they make the fur in those sections appear higher up and they're catching more of that light. It's helping to build up more depth and therefore more realism. So layers and contrast is what's gonna make a huge difference here. And all of the tips and techniques that I've shared in this video is what I've applied for the rest of his portrait. There was no other different technique, it was all based on my layering process and those contrasts. So I really do hope this tutorial has been useful. As I say, if it was, I would be very grateful if you could give it a like and a thumbs up because it does make a huge difference to my channel. And if you are interested in my slower in-depth tutorials on Patreon, I will link all of that in the description below as well. I'm going to be uploading another video next week um, and if there's any specific animals that you would like to see featured in tutorials I would love to hear any suggestions in the comments below because I do I'm more than happy to take on tailored content so whether or not there was a specific fur texture a color or a maybe a animal a wildlife subject that you would like to see in a video then I would love to hear um I'm, I love looking through thousands of photographs to find the right one that I want to work from so yeah pop them in the comments below and I'll get them added to my list of content to create as always thank you so much for watching